Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us in our third episode, I believe, in our tech series. Um, today, I want to discuss Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, you know, I think I was discussing with a mate earlier or a colleague earlier that that you know we've we've had so many sessions on uh, Office 365, and Office 365 is an amazing tool, and and there's some amazing features in there. Um, that I normally would in a session like this jump straight into a presentation or a how-to uh, a, a session on Office 365. With Windows Virtual Desktop, it's a fairly newish technology uh, from, from Microsoft and uh, I'd like to, to actually just lay a bit of groundwork uh, before we jump, uh, jump into a, a demo session. Um, just by way of introduction, my name is Louis Trichard. Uh, I work for First Technology KZN um, and this uh, advanced technology team. I'm a solutions architect um, and I can't say my speciality, but my passion certainly is is uh, the modern workspace, which is Office 365 and Azure. So, um, and Azure has grown phenomenally. Uh, First Technology KZN, the company I work for, um, you know, we've got uh, presence all over South Africa. We've got great partner companies like FirstNet uh, and First Digital that that certainly you know can help you with your your uh, uh, digital journey. So let's jump straight into Windows Virtual Desktop. Uh, what I'm going to do is it's not death by PowerPoint, I promise, um, but I, I do just have to lay a foundation. So bear with me as I lay the foundation, and then I promise you we've got some pretty cool stuff. We're gonna we're gonna look at uh, after that. So let's jump straight in. So as you can see, we're gonna talk about virtual Windows Virtual Desktop now. Windows Virtual Desktop is a service from Microsoft that runs on the Azure platform. Now, if you if you new to Microsoft or if you if you you know don't really keep your your ear on the pulse or your finger on the pulse with technology, Azure is Microsoft's uh, data centers throughout the world. It's a data center platform. Um, I'm going to show you a slide just now on, on where they're based and, and that, but these are the services, as you can see on the screen, um, of the different services that they offer. Now, I'm not going to go through all these services, but as you can see, there is a plethora of services that are accessible and available for you on a pay-per-use basis, okay? So it's a subscription basis. Um, you pay for a service as you use it, so pay as you go. Um, if you don't use it, you don't pay for it. It also works in a tenanted environment and, and don't want to get too technical. All that means is, is that you rent space in the Microsoft data center and use their services in that space, very much like you would do at a hotel. So I'd go to a hotel, I'll rent a room. So that is my tenant, my room. And I get to use the room and the services inside that room while I'm paying or staying there. Same with Microsoft Azure. You're renting a space in their data center and you consume the services, which you can see on the screen, inside that tenant. Um, the service we're going to look at today is Windows Virtual Desktop, which is a combination of some of these services. But as you can see, there is a lot of services available. I will also make this deck available um, if you would like to have it afterwards. Just pop uh, Jean an email um, and he'll, he'll happily share this with you or your account manager. Um, either or they will get the deck to you. So that is a, a what Azure is made of. It's a whole bunch of infrastructure and platform services. Um, you'd ask me the question, why Azure? Well, why not? You know, 95% of Fortune 500 companies use Azure. Uh, they've seen the, the advantage of the flexibility and, uh, and and the cost saving it is to their business to go into Azure. So as you can see there, there you know, Microsoft always shows off uh, with big names. But as you can see on the screen there, there are some big names that they that they do with, deal with. Um, go to the next slide. Also. The nice thing with Azure is that all infrastructure workloads. So if I'm speaking to you guys now uh, uh, in the corporate world, your applications, you know, I'm not talking about Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, Skype. I'm talking about your SAP applications, 
your uh, 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 um, Sage applications, um, JD Edwards, Oracle applications, NetApp, VMware, you know, Azure caters for support for all these infrastructures and also caters for you to modernize your application. So uh, the, the cloud platform, the Azure platform caters for Linux. And a lot of people don't realize this, but more than 60% or they say, yeah, 40% of Azure VM VMs are running Linux. I, I think it's more like 60%. Um, and all different distributions are supported. So, so Azure is definitely the, the cloud that you want to want to be in. Um, the, the next uh, slide that I want to show you is that all databases are supported. So, so again, you guys that work with the business applications will know that normally you'll have a SQL on-premise box, okay? And your application have to tie into that SQL on-premise. Um, and, and you'll have to maintain it and it's quite a, a quite a, a, a yeah, work intensive environment. Well, Azure offers extension of the on premise into the cloud or cloud native, which means that you can run everything in the cloud. And it's from SQL DB to Postgres, MySQL, Marion, uh, Cosmos, and Redis. Um, just uh, go to the next. Oh, sorry, I'm going backwards in slides. Apologies. Uh, yeah, I don't really, I'm not a big PowerPoint fan, so that's that's why I, I sometimes get confused. So um, Azure also allows for modernizations of applications. So it's, um, so, so if you have a big monolithic application, then you can modernize the applications. You can use containers. I mean, that's the big buzzword in the, in the IT industry at the moment is containerization and Docker and Kubernetes and, and those sort of things. And, and Azure allows you to use these services at the fraction of the cost that it would be to run it in your own data center. Um, you know, they, they, they talk about microservices, they talk about invent driven application development. And uh, we at First Technology can certainly help you to explore these uh, modernization routes. Um, so speak to your account manager and they'll definitely uh, put you in, uh, in, in contact with the, the, the right people. Um, so I'm not going to go too much into, into the different services of Azure. Uh, a couple of comments I want to make uh, on the Azure. We've seen some of the Microsoft competitors um, that they say, oh, the new world is cloud only. You must move everything into the cloud and don't worry about on-premise hardware and that. That to me is not realistic. OK, um, I, I can't see um, the cloud completely overtaking and overrunning all business that all business will move their service into the cloud. I mean, you've got hospitals, you've got banks, you've got, uh, uh, you know, law firms that has legal requirements. There are companies, you know, medical companies that that have legal requirements to keep data on premise. So so Microsoft has realized this and they have always advocated a hybrid cloud. If you want to be cloud only, most certainly you can. If you only want to be on premise, you certainly can. But probably the best way forward is leaning more towards the cloud side or the hybrid side where you will have some infrastructure on premise and some infrastructure on the cloud. So you might have you know, your, your identity, your domain controllers, et cetera, on premise and you would run your, um, what we're going to talk about, Windows Virtual Desktop in Azure and make that available uh, throughout the world, your web applications, etc. So there is always, always, always a need for hybrid infrastructure. Some services still need to be delivered on premise. Um, some services need to be delivered to your customers globally, and that that is where the power of, of Azure comes in. So if you look at that, uh, that uh, slide I've got up there, it just shows that the, how the on-premise will extend into Azure. Um, then, you know, your question is, what about security? What about compliance? What about what about my data? You know, will my data get mined? Will my data get hacked? Will I get hacked? Well, the beauty about Microsoft is is that they categorically do not mine your data. Um, 
there are other providers out there um, that do mine your data, and they also can't tell you in which data center your data is sitting. And you know, for me, that's a problem. I want to know where my data is sitting. I want to know in what region my data is. And with Microsoft, you can point to the region, not only the reason, you can point it to the data center. And if you really want to, Microsoft can take you to the hardware rack where your data is sitting. Again, like the hotel environment, Microsoft looks after the infrastructure. So they make sure the physical security, they make sure of the, the cooling that's needed for these servers, they make sure the servers are running, the hardware is up to date, up to spec, under warranty, they make sure there's redundancy in place for their hardware, um, and they make sure their infrastructure is patched and looked after. Your role as the customer is your data. You need to make sure that the data that you put in there is secure when your users access it. So, so Microsoft won't allow any third party um, people or themselves to see your data. They can't see your data. Um, so the security from that point of view is best in class, best in business. Um, to the extent is if you lose access to your tenant, uh, that data is pretty much lost. But I'm stressed, uh, I'm not trying to freak out. You know, the chances of that happening, I've never seen it happen actually. So I don't even know what the chances of that happening. But I want to just harp on it, put it in your mind at ease that your data is secure in the data center. They also comply to ISO, HIPAA, uh, Poppy, well, not Poppy, the, the GDPR in Europe, and a whole bunch of other um, other uh, 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 policies. And if you need a list of those, please chat to us, and we'll happily make that available. Again, just to show you the, the regions, so there is 54 regions worldwide. Um, they're available in 140 countries, um, 4,500 peering locations, and 130 edge sites. Um, we've got our own data center region in South Africa, South Africa North, South Africa West. So if we go ahead with uh, your WVD, or Windows Virtual Desktop deployment, or any other Azure deployments, your infrastructure would sit locally in the South African data center, uh, which it's awesome. Um, it's really awesome. Um, then if you look at uh, just compliance, again, I'll share the slide with you or just ask us, we'll share the slide with you. There's some of the, 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 the compliances that Microsoft complied to, NIST, ISO, um, and a few other ones. Uh, some of it obviously is not pertaining to us, but if you do business in Canada, we're compliant. If you do business in Australia, Singapore, China, we're compliant to the regional uh, 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 compliance policies. Um, and just quickly going through that, to as from a first technology point of view, from uh, um, our point of view, as your trusted partner, um, we, Microsoft has made all the tools available to us to number one, assess your environment. So we can assess your on-premise environment and see what's the best fit for you, give you all the details, all the figures up front and say to you, well, Mr. Customer, this is what can move to Azure, this is what can't move to Azure, and this is what we advise you do, and we build out a cloud journey for you. So we've got all the tools to assess. We have uh, all the tools available to migrate, so we, we can facilitate the migration for you, and then we have the, the facilities and uh, the, the tools to, to optimize your environment. So not only do we take your, through this journey, we continue walking this journey with you, because as new technologies come out, we optimize your environment. Again, there's just some partners that, that is, as, uh, has made their tools available in Azure uh, to use as a migration, assess migration, optimize uh, function. Uh, the next uh, thing, uh, you know, what I think is pretty cool about Azure is the multi-cloud cost analysis. So to be honest, you know, you guys that know me uh, know that I call a spade a spade. Initially, the, the cost management in Azure was terrible, um, and I did leverage a few uh, third-party tools for it. They have definitely upped their game. 
Um, the cost management is now a, a full end-to-end -end solution from, uh, uh, um, from start to finish across all your subscriptions, across all your resource groups, across all your different clouds. So you could actually, if you have workloads in AWS, you could plug those workloads in here and you could see a cost analysis of your AWS and Azure workloads in one single pane of glass. Um, to me, that is God, that is cool. I, I, I really think that's cool. I've used this uh, uh, dashboard um, for our own uh, use and really the, the, the analysis, the drawdown that we get is very uh, uh, awesome. It also gives you recommendations. So if you've over-provisioned or under-provisioned resources, it will uh, uh, show you those, those uh, under provision or over provision resources and you can adjust accordingly. Cool, so that is um, that is Azure. You, you, you know, that that uh, that is that's Azure for a quick rundown uh, in 15 minutes of what Azure is and what Azure can do for you. And as you see on the picture, it's just multi uh, industry from students all the way to farming to big corporate. So. Now I'm just going to focus a little bit uh, uh, on virtualization scenarios um, and WVD before or Windows Virtual Desktop before I jump into the, the, the live demo. So why would we look at Windows Virtual Desktop? Now, the, the, the pandemic or the crisis that's hit us at the moment has forced a lot of our companies to to look at remote, sorry, um, just yeah, just one question I see that's come up. I'm just going to publish that. Uh, can the cost management tool be used uh, for uh, estimates? Yes, it, it does. Uh, and uh, if you need uh, assistance on the cost management tool and demos, uh, please can you chat to your account manager and they'll happily set up, uh, 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 arrange a private session and I can run you through how to do that. Cool, but that's just uh, me asking the question. So getting back to, to, to the topic, we are, so because of this, uh, the seriousness and this horrendous pandemic that we're going through, um, a lot of businesses have been forced to adopt digital transformation a lot quicker than than any of us are probably comfortable with doing, okay? And a lot of things have changed. And and personally, and you guys know this. I mean, uh, it's 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 not difficult to see that that things probably won't be the same again after this is is done. I mean, I, I think fundamentally the way we work, the way we operate, the way we do business has changed. And and I honestly think that Microsoft with the Azure Cloud. And uh, not only the Office 365 uh, platform, but the virtual Windows Virtual Desktop platform does offer best-in-class solution to allow your business to become agile and work remotely and still be effective. And the reason I say that is, is that Office 365 aside, having to get your mail everywhere and your applications everywhere, I can now run my custom business critical applications securely <clears throat> inside the Microsoft Data Center without <clears throat> my data touching a end user's device. So I can either give a user a full desktop or I can give them a remote application. Uh, just excuse me for a second, I just... So I can surface a desktop where they have a full desktop with applications, where, whether it's a dedicated machine or a, a pool machine, or I can give them a remote application, which I'll demonstrate to you. And the reason we would do this is for security and regulation. So if you're in the financial industry, you know, normally you'd have all your devices, uh, financial health, healthcare or government, you'll have all your devices on premise and users will have to, to come in to work on those devices. Well, now you can still spin that up or bring that up, install that in your environment on a session host, and you can make that securely available to your users 
via a, a remote desktop session or a remote app session. Um, you can easily scale your workforce. You know, I'm thinking you know, of call centers, um, mergers and acquisitions. You know, if I'm busy on a big project, you know, I don't want to go buy a whole bunch of hardware. I don't want to go buy another server rack. So I can use the size and scale of Azure to scale my environment out, give secure access to, to uh, short-term employees or call center staff while they're running a project, and then scale it back down again. In schools, you know, um, setting up uh, uh, um, IT classrooms, it is hugely expensive. And, it, and, it's, and, you, and you're investing all that hardware and you're every two, three years, the hardware becomes redundant and you have to go through that exercise again. Well, now you can use a thin client type solution and give the users access to either the applications or the desktop they need to be able to, do, to, to, to study and learn uh, in school. Um, look at specific employees, so employees bringing their own device. You know, like I said, call center workers, branch workers, you know, if there's not a lot of security in branch workers, something else that I, I think is quite cool is, is my C-level executives. You know, in your organization, you have uh, executives or management that travel a lot. And you don't, what happens if that laptop gets stolen? It, you know, that data is sitting on that laptop. Well, now you can give them access security via a, a browser session so they can work from any PC that has an internet connection or a, uh, a iOS or Android device or tablet or Mac OS or even Linux, and they can access the ERP, the CRM software, etc., via this portal. So security, very easy uh, remote work, and, uh, and like I said, it's scalable. The next uh, thing, I suppose, is for specialized workers. So, and I, I had this morning, and in my demo, I'm gonna show it to you. Companies used to spend a lot of money, uh, especially in marketing departments, buying very expensive graphic intensive hardware. So if you had 10 people in your graphic design department, you generally bought 10 high-end spec PCs to run those applications. While with Windows Virtual Desktop, I can spin up one or two beefy servers and give 10 users access via a remote application and they can they can use those applications on a, a lower spec device. So, so they can number one work remotely and number two, I don't have to buy 10 of those devices. You know? I can spin up a machine in Azure, which I can turn off and on and in um, work hours, and they can access that application or desktop in Azure. So that is where cost saving and security comes in. What is virtual desktop uh, uh, infrastructure? Uh, let me just go to my next slide here. Uh, there we go, I then thought it froze. So desktop infrastructure is basically, as you can see on the slide there, is your um, data sent, your, uh, let me just go do this, is your session host running in the Azure data center and users access either the remote application or the desktop via a connection. So yes, you do require internet connection, but albeit a very small connection. Um, so it is running the session hosts inside a data center and then presenting it to a desktop or a application. Um, so that's pretty much what, what uh, VDI is. Uh, why centralize? Again, we spoke about flexibility of access, centralized management, um, security, business continu continuity. So again, like this uh, tragic disaster that's hit us, you know, we, we can be agile in deploying uh, our infrastructure out. Um, oh yeah, sorry, I just see there's a, 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 a comment in there when I coughed, I didn't use my elbow. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah thank you for pointing it out. Anyway, so let's go back into the, the, the VDI. Um, <clears throat> the next slide is, you know, the different technologies. I'm not going to go through that. Um, let's look at Microsoft's 
uh, offering on my uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. So firstly, the beauty of this is, is that it is a multi-session Windows 10 environment. That is a first. In the past, you had to, when you had on-premise remote desktop sessions, you had all your servers on-prem, you had your gateway, I'm not going to talk geek today, but you had all this infrastructure on-prem, and you had to give the guy a server desktop. Not anymore. Microsoft had launched a multi-session Windows 10 experience um, that has been optimized for Office 365. So I can give users multiple sessions on a on a Windows 10 device uh, with Office 365 in there, with OneDrive in there, with Teams in there, with Outlook in there, okay? And it's gonna feel like they're working on their own machine. Um, it supports Windows uh, uh, Server 2012 R2 and above. Um, so we can, we can virtualize both desktop applications and servers and server applications, okay? Desktops and apps. So yeah, Pascal. No need to run Pascal on premise anymore. You know, I could run, if I'm a small 10, 15 user organization that needs to, to have my users work on Pascal, I can now spin up a host in Azure, virtualize the application, and I just make that Pascal application accessible to them to be able to do their work from anywhere in the world. Um, the next thing I think a lot of guys will enjoy is you guys know that the, the support for Windows 7 has stopped and there's no more patches coming out for Windows 7. Well, here's the good news. If you go for Windows Virtual Desktop, we can virtualize your current Windows 7 workloads that are not being secured into Azure, into the Windows Virtual Desktop environment, and you get free extended support. There's no paid for support. We virtualize those machines into Windows Virtual Desktop, and you can carry on using those applications, and that will give you give your developers or app application suppliers time to modernize the applications that are running on Windows 7. Again, the beauty of Windows Virtual Desktop, security updates happen all the time. It's a secure environment that you manage. There's no external access into it. The uh, operating systems is Windows 10 Enterprise Multi-Session, Windows 10 Enterprise Single Session. So if I want to have dedicated, dedicated desktops, I can do that. I can give the guys dedicated desktops. Uh, you have Windows 7 Single Session, so that allows you to, to move your uh, out of date, but not out of use Windows 7 devices into a, 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 a extended support uh, um, cycle. Uh, it supports then all obviously um, all the latest all the latest uh, Windows Server uh, images, so Server 2019, 2016, and 2012 R2. It also so security in Windows 7 apps is covered by using VDI and Windows 10. Um, so I'm just going to publish this question. So the the so Windows 7 apps will run on, that can only run in Windows 7 operating system. We'll actually virtualize the operating system and let that app run on the Windows 7 infrastructure and surface the app either as a desktop, so we can surface the whole Windows 7 desktop, or we just surface the, the app as a remote app. Um, and, and that will run on a, a, a Windows 7 machine. Um, yes, you can do emulation in that in Windows 10, where you you can surf, you know, you sort of run uh, 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 Windows 7 apps on Windows 10 in a Windows 7 mode. Um, but you know that's not as stable as, as actually having the infrastructure with this with, on the operating system it was meant to run on, and then making that app uh, available. I hope that answers the question. And then obviously Windows uh, VM, uh, uh, VMs and the customer Azure subscription can be used. Um, just moving on to the next slide. Um, so I'm not going to go through that. So again, I spoke about Windows 10 Enterprise being Enterprise Multi-Session as the gold standard. 
So uh, by l leveraging Windows 10 Enterprise Multi-Session, uh, you'll, uh, you'll get the best of both worlds. You get shared Windows 10 desktops with your users, plus you can get the remote app experience. For the sake of time, I'm, I'm not going to uh, go uh, through all this. I'm going to stop the presentation now, and I'm going to go into a live demo. Once I've done the live demo, we'll go come back to the presentation where I'm just going to talk about the requirements for uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. So, everybody good with that? Uh, let's jump in. I see there's no questions uh, or no comments, so let me jump straight in. So, firstly, what I'm going to share is... Not that. Uh, I'm going to share... Um, this year. So, as you can see on my screen here, what I've done is uh, I am in my Azure environment. So, if I look at my Windows Virtual Desk uh, Development Resource Group, um, you can, I just want to show you the infrastructure. I'm not uh, going to be all techy and geeky with you, but you can see I've spun up the environment, all my networking, uh, everything is done in here. Um, I've got my <clears throat> storage accounts, machines, session hosts, etc. in here. And we will help you set that up. So you don't have to worry about building all that out. At First Technology, we will assist you uh, to set that up. And then through a maintenance contact, we can look after the maintenance, etc. for you. What I do want to show you is that besides that I'm in here, is that I've got a management dashboard. So I can manage my environment. So as you can see here, I've set up a tenant, which is my, my tenant applications. And then not only is it my, my tenant applications, but I can see the different host pools. So this is a for the Adobe application. So I want to, in this demo, give you a desktop where you can get a desktop with Adobe uh, 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 Creative Cloud installed. And then not just that is, I have some users hypothetically, that I just want to use the applications in, uh, um, in, in, in the creative suite. So what I've created is a second machine with a um, with a, a app group. So if you can see here, there's a remote application group. And in this application group, I have published applications. Now, this again is all techy and, and you don't have to worry about this. If you understand this, you'll, you'll see that the management is very easy. What I do want to show you is, is that number one, I can access this on the web. Okay, so I can access my applications on the web. So if I go into RD Web, uh, RD Web Web Client. So if I go in there, so I'm on any old machine with internet uh, internet connectivity. It can be a Mac, it can be a Linux machine, it can be a server. It could be a Windows 7 machine, Windows 10 machine. As long as I've got internet connectivity, I go to the web browser, I log into my feed, and I will see my apps becoming available. Okay, So this is surfacing it via a web browser, so I don't even need to have the applications on my machine. The second way of doing this is, and I'm going to stop sharing that for a second, and I'm going to share... Um, my uh, my remote app with you. So this is uh, the screen here. So there you can see what I've done here is this is on my machine is a remote application that I've opened. I've signed in, and if I look at the details, you can see there I've signed into the applications. I've got my username. The feed contains the applications, and there you can see the applications. Now what I can do. Let me just uh, quickly do this. Um, is I can double click an application and it opens it. And it opens it up and onto my machine. So unfortunately, I've got a few monitors here. So there it's opened up the Explorer and OneDrive on my machine. It was that quick. Okay. So it was that quick that it opened up onto my machine. So if I close this again, I'm actually just going to move this to another monitor. 
and I'm going to share that primary monitor with you so you can see the speed of which that opened up. So let me go share my primary monitor. So there's my primary monitor and you should see that. So I'm going to click on OneDrive. Double click on oh, no, it on the other screen. So there it's open it up and I can access it. So I close it again. Let's just try this one more time here. I open it up and that's how quick it opens. If I go into any of these folders, so if I go into my pictures folder here and I go to cool backgrounds and this is sitting on C users WVD admin, my FS Logic on OneDrive, cool backgrounds. And you can see there are the pictures in there. If I go to this PC, it shows me the file structure of this PC. So it's just going to open up that. And it will show me the, the file structure. The reason it's taking a little bit of time is because you can see there's not redirected drives of the machine that I'm working on. But there, there's the machine there, and, and that's how quick it is. So I can make OneDrive available. Users can work in OneDrive without actually having the files on their machine. The second awesome thing is you can see it's at the top there. The second thing is I've installed Lightroom, okay? So if I go double click Lightroom, there it's opened up, okay? This is Lightroom running on a, as a remote app via remote desktop on the machine in the cloud. This is literally, this is not running on my machine. So as you can see, this is a picture that I, that I took uh, last year at uh, Times Square, but look at the response of this. So this is the responsiveness. So I'm now selected that photo. I want to go edit it, so I'm not happy with the sizing. Guys, what I'm doing here live is working on a remote app with a machine sitting in Azure. So I want to change that a little bit. Uh, I'm happy with that. I just want to change the, the alignment. It's, there's alignments better done. Uh, then what I want to do is, is edit the color. And there you can see I've done the color changes and I can work as a graphic artist in a third party application that is a remote app from any machine that's got an internet connection. And the beauty is, is this is a telecom connection I'm on. So I'm having a live event with you. I'm sharing my desktop, plus I've got my remote app open on that same connection, and I'm doing edits. And you can see that the, the latency, the, you can see how quickly that works. I mean, it's like I'm working on my own machine. If I go and change that, it, it will change that, and that, that brings it more. Anyway, so you can see the changes there. If I close that, do you really want to quit? Yes, it's like being on my own machine. So I can close that. I've also got my other applications available. So I can go into Word. So if I open up Word, it will open up Word. There's my Word. That's I'm working on, on HTTPS on that document. So if I go in this document, that feels like I'm on my machine, but this is a remote app that is running in Azure. Um, so if I close out of that to show you uh, just quickly, what happens is if you install the remote desktop client on a machine, so whether it be a, 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 a Windows device, Linux device, Apple device, Android phone or tablet or iPad, um, you get the same access. So I can now access the full desktop application on my phone. So I put my phone on silent, but I could effectively, with my data connection, sit on my phone and work in Lightroom. Okay? I can do that on a tablet. I can do that on an Android tablet or an iPad. I can do that on a Mac Linux machine. Uh, what it also does in Windows 10 is, see if I drop my start menu down, what it's done is, it says recently added applications. You see on the left here, there is Adobe apps that it's added, the Creative Cloud, Lightroom, OneDrive, etc. So the user doesn't have to go into this remote desktop session. So I can close that out. I want to go start, and I'm going to go click on the application, the remote desktop application, uh, OneDrive. And what it does, it opens it up. So there's it there. So I'm just going to minimize that. 
there is it there. So they don't have to go into it. So, so the feel of actually working on your machine. But what happens if, if okay, so I can also go in here and just to show you that again, I can go open Lightroom from here and there you'll see it'll now open up Lightroom. There we are. That's how quickly that loaded up. See, it's starting up Lightroom as a remote app from the Windows Virtual Desktop. Now imagine you can give access like this to users, to Sage, Pastel, any third party application that you use in your organization. It started up. So that, that is pretty cool. But what happens if I've got a user that, that I want to give them a desktop? So, you know, my executive users, they don't want to use, um, they don't want to use uh, uh, just remote apps. They want a full desktop. Well, very easy. Um, again, I'm going to go here. Yeah, I'm going to go to my remote uh, uh, app. Where is there's it there? Remote desktop. I'm going to open the remote desktop application just to show you, and I can go to my session desktop. Now, this is a dedicated desktop that I've assigned to my users. So you can see it's initializing, initializing the remote connection. It will connect to the remote connection, uh, configure it, and then I'll have a full working Windows 10 desktop running on this machine. And I've got multi screens, so I've got multiple screens. So you can see the WVD admin. Please wait for FS Logic. That's handling my containers for my uh, uh, profiles, which I'm not going to get into. And uh, it's going to start up. And then my user profile is quite big, so so that's going to start up. This is amazing. I mean, that is really. I can't I can't begin to explain to you guys how quickly that started up from a blank image using my profile into this environment and I'll be able to use uh, OneDrive straight away. I'll be able to use my Outlook straight away without downloading any information. So I'm just going to minimize that for now uh, for the sake of time so I can surface desktops, apps, etc. I could have multiple app groups or app tenants. So if I have users that have different app needs, I can publish it here. Also, that desktop that's there now is also being published. In so again, that user that needs to work on that desktop doesn't have to go to the remote app. You can see it here. And then once I'm done, you can see there's my desktop. That's this here. If I go start. Uh, if I go to the File Explorer, just to show you quickly, um, while that's opening up, you know, I, you know, for the sake of costs, I didn't spin up a, a very expensive machine uh, because we know that. Uh, but you can spin up a very beefy machine that that will that will uh, obviously even start even faster. You know, I, I've got multiple displays. Uh, you know, I can't change it on a remote session. Uh, so I can't show you, but it's actually showing on all four of my displays that I have around me. So that is that is a desktop in in uh, in Azure. And then when they're done, you know, they they can literally go start, shut down, uh, etc. So there's the Explorer opening up. If I go into OneDrive here, uh, okay, I haven't signed in because the user that I have doesn't have a license, um, but it will show my OneDrive everything in there. Uh, just want to go yeah, quickly and just so you show you guys. Um, so I'm, I go to this PC and you'll see that it's connected to my PC that I'm running on my machine. So it will go in there. If I go into the Windows file users, I'll see uh, uh, um, my WDA admin folder and there's the profile that I'm running on. Good. So that is. That is just a quick demo on, on, on Windows Virtual Desktop and how to, to make Windows Virtual Desktop available to your users, okay? Let me just see if there's a bit of questions here. Is the application listed in Azure? Or do we have to upload an EXE and to have installed and available? So again, a uh, very good question. Let me just publish this question. Um, so it's your application. So 
I'll prepare the the host energy so I can I will make a what we call a a a a, a golden image um, uh, that we that will that will use and this golden image will um, will then be used um, for let me just get the right screen up for you guys uh, and without sounding uh, crazy let me just go there um, you guys can see that uh, ooh, I've lost my presentation now oh there we go so um, just answer the question going back to the apologies so you 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 supply the application so whether it's uh, 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 pastel uh, 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 sage uh, so, you know any application that you're using you will um, you will you will supply to us and we can spin it up and then make those desktops available so so you can decide whether it's a desktop or application and you can bring your own application the next question is how do you access your local or map drives when using a published application so again uh, Microsoft has purchased a technology called FS logic which allows you to um, it containerizes your your profile so in that profile I can build in file shares so because remember you, you know to run this I need identity which in turn means that I have to have an active directory uh, or the domain controller in Azure and, and I can I can publish my on-premise file shares via my VPN connection via my directory into the user profile and because the the um, because the, the the map drives is in the profile, it will be available to the user in that desktop. So it will be like having their own machine in the environment, just through a virtualized environment. I can also say that they can't access the drives on the machine they're working, so they can only access the map drives in the environment. I hope that answers the question. Next, um, can the video connection be timed? Um, yes answer is yes you can uh, time it you can uh, set that up and again we do that in your active directory so so we can definitely set up time uh, time connections from next question is from the WVV can I create VPN back to office that are hosts on site like um, ye yes with the asterisk okay so um answer is yes we just got to make sure i know as a, for a fact that that server client applications doesn't like working over a wan um but we have to take it by case by case scenario so we've got to understand i know you mentioned sap there so we just got to understand how you've uh, uh installed and managing it sap but i'm going to say yes with an asterisk uh, we'll just have to do our due diligence. Okay, so what are the licensing implications using high-end graphics applications? Is it pay per use via Azure? So, again, it is. It is. You've got a license with, with uh, 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 um, like I've got a Creative Cloud account. So what I've done there is I've used my Creative Cloud Adobe installer to install the Creative Cloud, and I, each session that I go in. I authenticate with my licensed user account. So, so again, it is it is not a a a, a page go license. It is a bring your own license, a boyl. Um, so, in my cases, for for the Creative Cloud, is I installed it last night quickly on that server, and then when I signed in uh, this morning just to check that everything's there, uh, I, I just sign in with my licensed user account. So, it's a bring your own license environment. Um, can you publish an app directly on a user's existing desktop? So you won't even know that he's working. Um, good question. I'll have to investigate. Um, it should be able to be done. Um, I don't like to say yes unless I'm 100% sure uh, of the process of the, the the workflow behind it. But in principle, yes, you can publish it. A, a to a desktop 
uh, and and I can that access it. But the caveat is that 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 user has to be on the domain, and you will have to control that that profile. So if it's a work profile on a on a on a domain joined PC, yes, you can. How does licensing work, for instance, on Creative Cloud? We currently have three users on full package. Will there be a cost saving? Um, so the question is, how does licensing work on Creative Cloud? Well, I'm not a licensing expert. Um, you will, the way I understand what Creative Cloud is, my saving is not on my Creative Cloud licensing. My saving is on the machines that I use. Because remember, graphics uses um, use of massive amounts of processing and graphics power. So three three Macs or three high-end graphic machines will cost you 150 to 200,000 Rand. Whereas if I spin up one powerful machine that costs me five grand a month and have three user sessions on there, do the math, it's a, it's a lot cheaper uh, uh, than having to upgrade machines every three years. So again, that is a customized discussion or individual discussion. So if you chat to your account manager, I'm, I'm happy to, to open the channels and we, we can see which way will be cost effective. So, so your cost saving comes in by sharing resources on a machine and then making that available to your users. What are the minimum bandwidth requirements? Um, a two meg ADSL. You know, I was running it uh, last night um, in peak time. So my, my, my infrastructure is sitting in the US. Um, I'm not running my infrastructure in South Africa, just purely because it's cheaper. Um, and, I, you know, peak time with everybody streaming and watching Netflix, my connection was down to about a meg and I was getting, and it was only using, I think about 30 kilobits per second. So the bandwidth requirement is very, very small. Um, next question, will there be a recorded session? Um, most definitely. Um, John will make the session available. Also, uh, if afterwards, if you know the link that you click to join the session, if you go to that link, it will just replay the session again. So you can access it at any time from that link. So copy and paste that link into a web browser uh, and it will replay the session. Uh, next question. Firewalls are on premise. Will the WVD user still break out on my local firewall for surfing and apply my custom web filter policies? Um, yes. Yes. So uh, we've got to do some routing. So, so again, I can route. I can route. Especially in the express route environment. So I can in an express route environment route all traffic out your firewall. I don't necessarily have them. I don't necessarily need them to route out of uh, out of uh, out of the the Azure Internet. I can definitely route it out of your your firewall. Uh, just that question was, you know, can I route? Um, yeah, so you can route all the traffic through through uh, uh, your firewall. Next question, does MS Teams video conferencing work properly in a virtual environment? Um, diplomatic answer is some of it. Honest answer from, from me, no. So, and, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So, um, I'm running an instance of Teams here. So, I'm going to just share my screen again. So, I'm going to share my screen here just quickly with you guys. And uh, yes, I'm sure I want to share. And I'm going to share my screen one. So you guys should be able to see my screen here. Now, this is a team that I've published to myself. This is a Teams application that I've published to myself. OK, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. This is a, a remote app that I've published. Chat. You can see the, the chat functionality. It's responsive. The application is responsive. The, the calendar is responsive. So chat, IM, desktop sharing, files, 
teams, everything works beautifully. The only place where this does not work beautifully is with calls, and I'm going to show you why. So if I go in here and I want to phone Louis, so I'm going to try phone myself, who is on a call at the moment. If I go click call, audio call, it is, there is no, I don't have a microphone to, to talk. So you guys can see that there's a call coming into me. So again, I'm going to do that. So that's all through my virtual environment, through my virtual desktop. I'm calling, and you'll see the call come in now. So I see the call come in, and then it says to me, there's no microphone. So unfortunately, I can, you know, I can do live events, stream to me, I can do Teams, I can do IM, I can do desktop sharing, everything in Teams via this uh, 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 remote app environment. The only problem is, is like I say, is is that you you can't talk. I mean, there's no microphone to go through. I can go and, and turn on system audio, but the latency is just is just too much. Um, if that makes sense. Okay, next question. I hope that answered your question. By the way, uh, next question: Would you be able to move in a virtual desktop instance? Uh, yeah, you can. So it's, it creates an image. So, so again, the question was from Enrico: Can I can I move my images around? Of course you can. Um, so what I've done is I've created a a a, a master image um, that I use to uh, to spin up my my machine. So, um, so yeah, you can move your images backwards and forwards. Um, yeah, so very good question. So I quickly just want to just share my uh, PowerPoint again. Um, and the reason being is, is I, I want to just quickly go through the requirements for WVD. Again, just before we cut off at two, um, first technology, John, you don't know about this. Uh, I discussed it this morning with, with uh, Michael uh, and the team. We, on a case-by-case -case basis, will offer a migration assessment, so standard assessment, case-by-case -case basis at, at uh, reduced or zero charge, okay? So obviously, if it's a big, complicated environment where, where it's a call center, we have massive amount of desktops, you know, there's a lot of preparation work in there. but. For small organizations that you that you want us to run an assessment too on, we we're happy to assist you with that. But again, we'll 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 uh, um, assess it on a case by case basis. So please speak to your account manager around that and, and arrange that, and we will be happy to assist you with assessments. To quickly just go through the the Windows desktop requirements, uh, I just quickly want to go through this. So again, last thing you need is. Microsoft 365 E3 or A3 if you're school or E5 and A5. The other beautiful thing is, is that you can use M365 F1. This is for your frontline workers. So if you've got stores, if you're a retail environment and you you want to you want to surface a a, a a point of sale application, you can do that with the F1 license. We can also use Microsoft 365 Business. Uh, or the Windows 10 Enterprise E3 uh, E5, Windows 10 Education A3 A5, as well as the Windows 10 VDA per user. So that is your uh, uh, um, current uh, uh, licensing requirements. Okay, so that that is the licensing requirements. Um, Why wow, virtual desktop reduce total cost of ownership, streamline management and increase flexibility. Uh, again, outlay is cheap. I know Jean and them are putting a package together uh, uh, um, to, to make it uh, easier for you guys to onboard and offboard. Why choose Windows Virtual Desktop? Well, it's proven technology. Um, yeah, and these times we need stuff that works. We don't, we don't need stuff that might work or should work or that's difficult to work. We need stuff that works. and. And Microsoft, you know, that's proven technology. So, again, and uh, 
ongoing investment uh, um, that Microsoft's putting in there. Uh, it's got extensive management capabilities, which I didn't go into, and it also makes IT's life a lot better. So it, it, it frees up IT to, to do what they're supposed to do, to make sure that everything is running properly and everything is secure. And with that, I'd like to say thank you. So just one question from Bilani, based on a team demo with a team score, does this mean if you wanted to use VoIP apps, you'd have to provision a desktop to have a, uh, uh, no. So Bilani, the way, um, the way we we surface Teams, because it's, Teams is a, a application that runs on your phone. So it runs on your phone, it runs on, on your tablet, it runs on your desktop, um, and we can secure it with Intune for uh, app security. So I can do remote app security via Intune. I, I honestly say to customers, the best thing is just install Teams on the machine you add. So even, even if it's a bring your own device, install Teams because as an IT administrator, I can control the security of that this device. You know, I can I can do the remote app security on this device. So instead of of, of battling to surface audio through a remote desktop connection, uh, everything else works. I mean, you know, if you just want to use it for for IM Teams access. Uh, and live event access, that's fine. But if you want to use it as a, a PABX call replacement, just install it on your phone or your the PC you're on or the thin client you're on. It's such a small install and I can control it or just use it through the web browser. I mean, you, you can use it through the, the web browser on the device. Guys, thank you for listening to me. Um, the session is over now. Um, if there is, I might hang around for a few more questions. Um, I do think uh, uh, if you're interested in this, chat to your account manager, chat to Jean, uh, and there's all a whole bunch of other discussions around this, which is mobile device management, security, how do I secure my, my, my applications, my remote workforce, how do I make sure my data doesn't leave my organization. Um, again, if you are interested in a, a, a another uh, episode on 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 device security and device management, I'll be happy to, to arrange another event. Uh, yeah, thanks guys. Have a great afternoon. Stay safe uh, and stay strong. We'll see you, we'll see you soon. Thanks everybody.